All right, let's talk about automation in plugins within Pro Tools. All right, so in my last video, we talked about automation within Pro Tools, the automation modes within Pro Tools, did kind of a primer on that. So if you would like a review on that, a refresher on that, if you would like to watch that video, please check it out. I'll have a link in the description below and I'll put a card up on the screen for it. So um, feel free to check that out. It'll kind of give you a, a baseline for uh, what we're working on today with actual uh, plugin automation. So that's what we were looking at here. We were looking, this is from the previous video. And just like in the previous video, when I hit play here, we'll see things moving, but we're not gonna hear the actual audio. I feel like um, it'll just get in the way. So I'm actually not even recording the audio from Pro Tools today into this video. So first of all, let's let's put a plugin on here. I'm gonna do my favorite plugin that I, <laughs> that I use all the time, uh, Fab Filter. So um, I'm using the Pro Q3 here. This is their EQ. And if I wanna automate a parameter in Pro Tools, what I can do is I can click on this folder here under where it says auto, and I can choose a parameter. So let's say I want to, let's say number seven is one that I often automate, right? So let's say I want to automate band seven frequency. I can add it to that list and hit okay. And now when I go to look for my plugin, my parameters, right? It's gonna be an option here. So here is my band seven frequency that I have enabled to be automatable. So now I now have an automation graph for that parameter and I can have it change over time right here. So let me turn on number seven here and I'll just show you really quick. Um, let me do this even faster here. So if I hit play here, we'll see number seven change in frequency and see how this is the band seven frequency. So let's watch it. There it goes, starts to move. So that's one way you can automate plugin parameters within Pro Tools. That's kind of the slower way, the mouse click way. We're gonna talk about some actual shortcuts that you can use today. So let's see. So you can do things the way that I just showed you. Um, I'm gonna remove this from the list here just to start fresh. Um, but let's say I want to automate that same parameter. What I can do is I can do the power class. So control, option, command. If you're on a Mac, um, what is it on Windows? It's like control, alt, something else. Someone in the comments, please let us know. Um, but it's the power class. So control, option, command, and then you click on the parameter. And if it's automatable, you should be able to just enable automation for it. And now it'll be an option again. I'll just go overdo go over the volume here. So band seven frequency, it's an option there. Similarly, you know, I have no option here other than this one for the Pro-Q. Um, but if I wanted to do that power claw, uh, control command option and click on this one and enable it, now I have that option as well, right? So that's another way you can enable a parameter without going through this whole menu. Um, it's just a little bit faster power claw, click on the parameter. Some parameters within some plugins can be automated this way and some cannot. So if you try this on a parameter within a plugin, within your favorite plugin, and it doesn't work, it's probably because it's just not an option with that plugin. That manufacturer didn't program that into the plugin. Now, another thing you can do is let's say you want all the parameters to be automatable for whatever reason. What you can do is, again, the power claw, so control, option, command, and then you click on this folder and that'll automate, make all the parameters that are automatable within the plugin, um, it will activate them and make them, to put them into automation mode, right? So it's a lot of parameters for this plugin. I don't normally do this for this plugin, but I could see workflows where, for example, especially if you have like a controller, some kind of um, interface that has a controller to it, um, if you wanna just automate everything within the plugin, and then for example, use one of our automation modes to just kind of move stuff um, that can be, a good way to do it, right? So let's say I automated all these parameters, even without a control surface, and I wanted to put it into touch. Now I can hit space bar and just move stuff. And because these are all automatable, it should make these move over time. So now if I switch over and view band three here, that was this band here. I can see the number right here when I click on it, right? Um, what I can see is I can see that automation that I just wrote just by dragging stuff around. So you gotta keep in mind that it's gonna move it through time, right? So if you're just trying to like set the location for a parameter and leave it, um, this is not the mode that you want to be in, right? So um, 
Yeah, but what you can see is you can see that this automation got written. So let's watch. There it goes. And then this one will move too because I moved that one. Cool. So that's uh, a way you can kind of more intuitively and quickly and easily automate all, you know, whatever parameters you want within your plugin. And it depends on the plugin, again, which ones you can automate. Um, but then, you know, once you're all done, you just want to make sure that you go out of your automation mode so you're not accidentally writing things as you go. And again, that's the power claw, right? So control, option, command, and then you click on this folder here. And that will take any plugin parameters that can be automation enabled, and it will enable them for automation. Okay. Okay, and then there's another shortcut that I've kind of recently started using and I found it to be very helpful. So I just clicked on this parameter to switch to a different parameter. Um, so this one's number five, right? So what um, I've learned, and I think this is pretty helpful if, you know, for speeding up workflow, which can be very valuable, especially if you're working in a studio. Um, what you can do is you can hold control and command. So I think of it as like the power claw minus the middle one, right? That's how I remember it. Power claw minus the middle one, control command. And then you click on the parameter. So this is number five. And what it's going to do is it's going to open up the automation for that parameter. Um, so it'll open it up here, not as a sub one, but it's still pretty useful. So if I click it, see how it just swapped there to band five and it's, it's frequency, right? So it's going to the first one that actually has some change here. So um, that's a really helpful shortcut. I mean, I just, I don't know what else to say about it. I find it very helpful. So as I move around this plugin, I can, for example, control command, click on this one, view that one really quickly. Click on this one. There's nothing there. I don't think I changed that one yet. But anyway, you get the idea. Control command, click on a parameter, check it out. And then another one that I found to be very helpful, like right now we are in this band two frequency thing, right? You could click and then go up to waveform when you're done and you want to go back to the waveform view, which is something I like to do. It just helps things feel clean to me, right? But another way you can get back to the waveform view, right, is you can do, let me do command control and click on a parameter just to bring it back into this view. So now I'm on band three frequency. Um, what you can do is you can do the same shortcut. So control command, and then you click on the nameplate for the track and it'll bring you back to that waveform view automatically. So that's usually a little faster than like clicking and swapping, right, is doing things that way. So I hope that helps. I think that's everything I have to share today. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if this helps you. Let me know what shortcuts you found helpful, especially if it has to do with automation or anything close to it, right? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all that stuff. I have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Noise, and my Patreon patrons get access to additional content. The big thing I've been focusing on lately is the Discord server where we're um, sharing information, sharing articles, sharing mixes. We're doing a little book club on there. It's been a lot of fun. So uh, I believe you can join that for as little as a dollar a month and it helps support my channel. So thank you so much to my Patreon patrons and please feel free to check that out if you feel so inclined. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday and thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. Um, I don't know what's going on. I, uh, I spoke at the Association of Popular Music Ed Conference on Saturday. Um, the whole conference was a ton of fun. I was there for the whole thing. I went to talks during every um, section of time, right? And I had a lot of fun. Everyone there was really nice, really cool. Um, and I had a really good time. And I'm thinking maybe I'll make a YouTube video out of my presentation uh, just so I can share it with people. I don't know if I'll make it public. Let me know if you want to see it because I... It's kind of nerdy. It's about um, music tech assessment strategies. So, you know, working with students with music tech um, as the subject. And I don't know. I don't know if it's like it's not really overlapping with what people tend to come to my channel for, I think. But uh, it is kind of, you know, it's on the, the music tech is the same subject. So uh, let me know if you're interested in seeing that. I might record the video and then share it privately. Um, but if enough people want to see it, I'll make it public, whatever. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. And uh I guess with that I hope I hope you're all having a good time and talk soon. <laughs>